So I want to show you guys some tips for making your garlic cheese biscuits. I already have my dry ingredients in the bowl, so I have my flour, my baking powder, and my salt all mixed up together in this bowl. We are following the biscuit mixing method because we're making lobster biscuits or garlic cheese biscuits, red lobster biscuits, whatever you want to call them. Next step is to measure my shortening. Now you guys are going to have a much bigger container of shortening than I do. This is just what I happen to have on hand. Um, but shortening is a type of fat. It's super, super sticky. So there's a couple ways you can try and keep it as clean as possible when you're measuring shortening. My recommendation is to get out your rubber scraper and scoop a bunch of your shortening into your dry measuring cup. Shortening is kind of a weird ingredient to measure. You have to actually pack it into your dry measuring cup. There's no real good way to level it off. You just pack it in and then you kind of use the side of your scraper to level it off once it's packed in like that. I'm going to scoop this into the trash. Alright, once I have my one third cup measured of shortening, I'm going to add it to my bowl, but shortening is really sticky. Now it's sticking to my dry measuring cup, so trying to drop it in like that is not going to work. I need to get out a spoon, and I'm going to scoop my shortening into my bowl of my flour, salt, and baking powder. Next step of the biscuit mixing method is to cut that fat in, so cut your shortening in. To cut an ingredient in, you're going to use this tool, and if you remember, this tool is called a pastry blender. And what you're going to use or do is with your pastry blender, you're just going to kind of chop down at your shortening. You'll notice it gets stuck in the pastry blender, so to get it out, just tap the side of your bowl. And you're going to kind of, notice my like twisty motion with my hand, you're going to kind of twist your arm to chop up that shortening. And you want to chop your shortening up until it's kind of small, almost think pea-sized chunks in your bowl. It's not going to completely mix and incorporate, it's just going to chop up a little finer or coarse crumbles. So this is what your bowl should look like next. Once you get to this point, you're going to add in your liquid ingredients, and for the sake of argument, our cheese is going to be a liquid ingredient. So you're going to add your milk and cheese into the bowl. So you're going to add your milk, and I'm actually not using cheese in my recipe because I don't have any. But you would add cheese into your recipe, so mine will just be garlic biscuits. You get the garlic cheese biscuits. And you can use a rubber scraper or a wooden spatula, whatever you want and mix up your ingredients, your milk and your dry ingredients and shortening and stir it up real good until everything is nice and incorporated. Once you get to this point, your batter is ready to go. And again, pretend yours has cheese in it. You will next get out a cookie sheet and line that with parchment paper. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so once you have your batter ready and your pan lined with parchment paper, you're going to get out your cookie scoop from your kitchen. I know it's weird because we're not making cookies. But you're going to get out your cookie scoop and you're going to scoop your batter and you're just going to drop it onto the pan. Now you could just take a spoon and scoop it and drop it onto the pan, but this is going to allow for our biscuits to be all the same size. And then once they're all the same size, they're going to cook evenly. So you're not going to have some little bitty biscuits burn while your big biscuits don't even cook quite right. So drop all your biscuits onto your pan. Once all your biscuits are on your pan, we will bake these in the oven. When they come out of the oven, that is when you will um, add your butter and garlic mixture to them.
You do want to give these biscuits a little bit of room for growth uh, because they will expand in the oven because of that baking soda. So I'm going to strategically place my extra biscuits, hoping they do not grow into the other ones. All right, and then these can go, once they're lined on your pan like this, they can go into the oven and bake them.